Fluffy Angel just had a bath. Yay! You gonna talk today? Maybe one day we can hug. Okay, so today I thought it might be fun if we pitted America against Canada based solely on completely random objects. And also humans. Why Diane? Are we going to be looking at healthcare? No! Are we going to be looking at politics? No! Will we be comparing education? No, 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 no! This is an entirely superficial list based on completely random stuff. What I done picked out of my brain head. And um, before I start, of course you can make an argument against or for each of these things. Of course you can! But then it wouldn't be a completely random list. So let's start at the beginning. We're gonna go with number one. The law enforcement. Wait, 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 wait! Uniforms. So in America, the police uniform is iconic. It's very efficient and official. Whenever I see it, I kind of think of Police Academy the movie. Do you remember the guy who could do all the sound effects? <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. Good movies though. Anyway, they're dark in colour, which is probably very practical, and they have that nice little crest on them and their little hats. Overall, they're very neat and efficient. Now, in Canada, they have two types of law enforcement, as I understand it. The regular police, very nice, and Mounties. And they wear those lovely red jackets and hats. And it's quite regal and beautiful. And I remember there was a TV show about that too, so I always think of that when I see them. And I know the Mounties aren't the everyday regular police, but to an Irish person, that's what I think of when I think of Canadian police. I mean, they have red in their uniforms and that's just a beautiful color. What could go wrong? Oh, no way. For number one, I'm gonna award the point to Canada. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. Next up, we have the accents. Okay, so on the face of it, the Canadian accent and the American accent, which obviously have lots of different dialects, but the generic Canadian accent and American accent are kind of not too dissimilar, but if you listen carefully, you can definitely hear it. Now, I can imagine for Canadians, it really annoys them when people say a boot, because I've listened quite carefully, and I think I have a good ear, and I've never heard an actual Canadian say a boot. I imagine it's a bit like when people think Irish people say top of the morning to you. We don't really, except in jest. They're both lovely accents which we're quite attuned to hearing. The generic Canadian accent is quite, like, chill. Maybe one could even call it a lazy sound. Eh? Oh. If you get me. Whereas the American accent, hey, ha. Oh. It's very enthusiastic and energetic. I know it depends on the individual, but this is a list, so. So I'm going to give that point to America. Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light. Next up we're comparing your most annoying exports. Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift. Both are equally irritating pop stars that you've inflicted upon the rest of the world. What I do like about both Swift and Bieber is that they came up through social media. Taylor Swift's dad apparently did a lot of stuff for her. I respect what talent they have, but they are very annoying people. <coughs> and I have to read about those people like all the time. They're everywhere. I will admit I've jammed to their tunes from time to time, but when things get dark, sometimes you just need a little bit of Taylor Swift. Shake it off, shake it off. So in this case, I'm going to give the point to the least annoying, annoying person, and that's Taylor Swift. Go America. Fight, fight, fight. Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light. Next up, let's compare bacon. Both Canada and America have very different ham cuts to us. Bacon in America tends to be like this crunchy thing and people have it for breakfast and it looks like a big long strip. And in Canada, they have something called pea meal. I actually had pea meal when I was over in Canada and it was very nice, it was very juicy. And I also had bacon in America when I shot a commercial over there. So they're both nice, but I'm gonna give the point to Ireland because honestly, we do rashers. Rashers are lovely and dirty and greasy and they're just what I'm used to, so I like them. And this is my list and I'm gonna give the point to Ireland even though that wasn't really an option. <laughs> Next up, we have food liquid sauce things. And I went with this one because I can't do any kind of list about Canada and not talk about maple syrup. Maple syrup is <laughs> lovely. I'm sorry, there's no other way to say it. It's just lovely. And when I'm watching it pour onto the pancakes, it makes me feel warm in my belly. And just, it just, I love maple syrup. It's just really good. Now on the flip side, my favorite thing, which obviously is not a direct equivalent, but in America, you have hot fudge sauce. 
Hot fudge sauce is something I'm passionate about. I have it with ice cream whenever I possibly can. It's best to order it on the side and pour it on yourself so they're not so scabby with how much sauce they give you. That's just a little Diane tip next time you're ordering ice cream. Get the sauce on the side. It goes with cold ice cream really nicely and you can actually go to McDonald's and order a double dose of it. And yes, you'll get a little bit fatter but it's kind of worth it because the hot fudge sauce is just so good. So honestly, this is probably my hardest one to choose between. Oh, I'm gonna give the point to Canada because it's on their flag. You have to give the point to Canada. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. I'm sorry, America. I am actually genuinely passionate about your hot fudge sauce. My next random American versus Canadian thing is Ryan's. Both America and Canada have a lot of people called Ryan, like a lot of Ryan's. Canada has Ryan Gosling and Ryan Reynolds, and America has Ryan Philippe and Ryan Seacrest. These are the Ryans I've chosen to use for this case study. And I think you guys know who the winner is. Oh Canada, our home and native land. Next up for the crack, let's compare donuts. Canada has Tim Hortons donuts and America has Dunkin' Donuts. We actually can access both Dunkin' Donuts and Tim Hortons donuts in Ireland. Dunkin' Donuts had a shop in Ireland when I was growing up and we used to go there as a special treat on St. Patrick's Day. So there is indeed some nostalgia involved in seeing the beautiful pink frosting upon a Dunkin' Donut. In the meantime, Tim Hortons donuts are sold in news agents. Some of you will know them as convenience stores. And when I think of Tim Hortons donuts, I think of the donut holes where they just sell you the ball. And they're very nice, but because of where you buy them, they seem a little less romantic to me. So I'm going to give the donut point to America. Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light. My next random comparison is between two of my favorite types of television show. Shows about border control. I've learned that the louder you are, the more likely you are to get your issue resolved. I'm just gonna put up a little thing so you know which shows I'm talking about. In both cases, they both handle border security very politely that I have seen. I have read stories about the TSA mishandling things, but we're just looking at the TV shows here. And I have to say, the people who appear in those TV shows are equally awesome, so I'm going to give points to both America and Canada on this occasion. Oh, oh, can you see? Oh, oh, Next up, let's compare the age at which you get to drink. In America, you can do a lot of stuff, like get married, but you can't drink at your own wedding because the drinking age is 21. 21. I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume a lot of people drink underage in America. Not that I endorse it. Meanwhile, in Canada, your drinking age is, I believe, 18 or 19? I think it depends on where exactly you are in Canada. In my personal experience, the best way for young people to drink is to learn how to drink at home. Having a small beverage of wine with an evening meal. Drink responsibly with your parents. And when you're going to college and you're told you can't drink, you're obviously gonna rebel and drink even more. You've just made it more exciting, Law. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. And the final thing we're going to look at today is healthcare. No, it's not healthcare. We're going to look at your national sports. In Canada, they are passionate about hockey. They even play it in the Olympics. They play it on ice. I assume they play it off ice. I actually don't know. I played hockey in school, but we didn't play it on ice because we don't have ice. So I totally get the appeal of hockey. Also, I've read that people deliberately bash into each other, like that's their job on a hockey team. They're like people who are employed to bash into each other. Football is the passion of America. You guys go absolutely believers for football. I'm led to believe by movies and TV shows that school teams are like a big deal in America. When you get through to the finals in Irish schools, it's very exciting, but not like, kill people exciting and you go equally mad for hockey in Canada but I'm gonna have to award this point to America because they just seem to be a tiny little bit more psychotic about it whereas Canadians are just like let's go drink a beer and enjoy the game overall oh say can you see by the dawn's early light oh say can you see by the dawn's early light so that's it for my completely random comparisons. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget right now I don't have a Patreon or anything. I just have merch. So please go and buy a sticker or a cup or a hoodie because the hoodies are super cool. And feel free to engage in the comments below with one another in a respectful way. And I'm gonna let Chewie finish the video. Like, share and subscribe. And be sure to hit the notification bell. Bye bye.